Hello, uh, we are the Life Keys. I'm here with uh, Dr. De La Bella and we have our fellow Eva Borishinsa with us. And can we switch to the review screen of Bruca just for me to very briefly introduce the patient, not to lose that much time. Uh, for this case, we selected a very young patient, as a 35-year-old uh, male with, um, can we move to the next slide, uh, that had uh, three years ago a uh, very extensive myocardial infarction of anterior wall. At uh, that time, next, he was in a very slide. bad condition. Can we move to the next slide, please? Yeah. Next um, slide, and please. Uh, he had, uh, he was resuscitated. He was uh, one of several time on ECMO, which is relevant for the uh, groin uh, puncture because the right groin is very stiff. Uh, he was treated obviously then with uh, a LED stenting and it, it unfortunately resulted in a very, very large uh, infarction with uh, very low ejection fraction and apicoceptal aneurysm. Uh, uh, he underwent implantation of an ICD and for three years he was uh, reasonably well uh, until this autumn then he started to receive shocks for fast VT. He's, uh, he had a history of thrombus in aneurysm. We performed a CT to rule out the thrombus. Uh, it was not there at the recently, and he is on standard treatment with uh, um, uh, uh, um, heart failure. He's not on amiodarone. We didn't opt for this because of the age. Uh, we didn't want to load him with amio at uh, 34 years of age. Can you move to the next slide? And uh, this one should show the ECG that uh, uh, is uh, uh, showing a scarring, uh, probably on the anterior wall. Can we move on the uh, uh, next slide? And this is uh, just some tracings from his ECD, uh, ICD. So you see very rapid VTs uh, uh, of uh, 250, uh, some oscillation in the cyclones. Can we move to the next slide? And this is a uh, uh, therapy from the uh, from the device uh, uh, shocks. Uh, so uh, just a. This is it about the indication. So, so I believe that uh, makes a really large substrate to treat. But it's a young patient, and it's obviously we can improve very much quality of life. Maybe prognosis, as we heard from the previous talk. Uh, I mean, just about the setup of the system uh, of, of this procedure. Uh, we have a general anesthesia for this case. We started with introduction of sheets. We have uh, intracardiac echo or RV pacing catheter. We use both transeptal and retrograde approach to have a good access to, to all the sites. And maybe uh, Paolo will now describe uh, induction of it yeah. and what we had seen. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah thank you, Peter. It, we went on before doing any mapping maneuver to program steam and that was... We should have a review screen uh, Pruka. Can uh, we switch to the Pruka review screen? Sorry, uh, I was speaking sustained uh, VT easily inducible by I think triples of beginning with the cycle length that really matched closely the um, ICD interrogation electrograms. So we thought that this would be a, a good target and we went on to sinus rhythm mapping and probably Federico may, may you please... Can we switch to end site please? So we did first of all a, a ablation catheter generated volume map uh, that showed as expected a significant uh, area of scarring all along the anterior septal wall and uh, uh, in, uh, kind of embracing also this inferiorly and I think relevant to this as y we will see later is also the contiguity can you please shift to the septal wall uh, the contiguity of the scar border with the uh, conduction system. So you see from left to right the tracking of the his bundle left and the I think the, the inferior fascicle that goes all along the septal wall until it really merges into the area of the scar. Uh, we then uh, refine this map with a high density tool, the grid that had provided a kind of a clearer view of the propagation pattern during sinus rhythm showing all along the septum areas of double potentials uh, that we may see probably before because we are here at deep mapping but before we had sinus rhythm uh, recording that showed a nice line of double potentials uh, oh, oh. Maybe Can we switch yeah. on the X-ray? We have uh, lost the sc big screen here. There's a technical I, I, problem. I think they can see Federico. Okay, thank you. Yeah, can you please go back and show on uh, the sinus rhythm Pruka recording of the type of electrograms that we were able to record during sinus rhythm all along the septum? So double electrograms 
Can uh, we show on review Bruca screen the without pacing? So these were the signals on the... Okay. So with that in mind, we uh, generated a kind of a LAT, a, a local activation times map. Uh, there was truly not really late potentials, but uh, some area of conduction delay. I is this, Federico, the map during sinus rhythm? Yes. Okay, so you see uh, the core code stands for uh, everything that is white within the QRS, maybe the terminal part of the QRS, kind of reddish, so definitely late potentials in the domain of the yellow and green colors. Can we, can we switch to uh, the After having that, we map. went to uh, induction of VT. That, however, was not as monomorphic as the prior attempt. It really quickly went into polymorphic flutter, and uh, we really had to shock the patient within a few seconds, so no time really to achieve mapping. The initial strategy was to try to place the grid at the site of conduction delay during sinus rhythm that get the VT running for a bunch of seconds. But you can see here, there, we got really nothing one-to-one -one into this, and uh, we really had to go into shock. So really, I would say this is a case where uh, activation mapping is impossible, both for hemodynamic reasons, quick deterioration, but also I would say for uh, continuous changing of the QRS morphology, so that really brings us out of the possibility of targeting a single re-entry mechanism. So sadly enough, we went back and we decided to go on with a kind of mechanistic type of mapping, deep mapping. We set the uh, pacing at 600 milliseconds, uh, and after a dry drive train of six, seven beats, uh, premature at 300, and uh, in order to have capture, and uh, Federico is showing you the area of the delay of the potentials evoked by premature that really was very nice and uh, showing uh, different areas of substantial conduction delay uh, that really probably will be used as the target for uh, ablation now during a sinus rhythm. So this is what we gathered. We are open to questions or if you, Peter, have to do any some more comments. So Paolo, yeah, just maybe for the that. audience, we can review the, the map. So what you see on end side is the color coded. And we had a three maps. First was this anatomical map uh, the, uh, with some activation of voltage. Uh, first was voltage, actually. The, sen the second one with this, the activation, which was not really delayed. But the one that is now showed, so for all everybody to, to, to understand. So Peter? this is uh, the third, the, the, the seventh extra systole, the extra ones, and we just annotate the last component which you see on the review screen and the later it gets the kind of darker color it, it got so the white colors there means no delay after this extra beats and the red one means a small delay yellow means bigger delay green and blue it's it's great delay like one you see on the review screen so this it sets this requires some programming of the of the of the setting of window of interest and referencing those extra beats but the the map you create has a clear view where is the biggest delay of this delayed activation uh, during pacing. So the blue ones are the most delayed, but as you can see in the review, there is a large, much larger area that uh, have this. Uh, maybe we can also comment that uh, the patient uh, came with the uh, non-LBBB and after some mapping, just mapping with the HD grid, the QRS got wider, which is a common, uh, unfortunately, uh, situation. So it's better to map and annotate the conduction system prior any farther mapping because then you know that you yeah. want to, and I believe the aim here is not to create permanent LBBB because then you would have to upgrade the patient unless uh, it was really necessary because that may really deteriorate him hemodynamically in a kind of longer term. Yeah, I think Peter to add it, I think I'd, I'd be rather optimistic because the, the prior maps were generated by transeptal axis, both of the ablation catheter and the grid, but then when I wanted to go a little bit more lateral, I uh, also performed a retrograde access, and I think that was traumatic uh, related to the uh, transit of the grid retrogradely, so we didn't work really on, uh, on that. And also the conduction system was, fortunately enough, as you pointed out, achieved before any left bundle, so that was fine. That enables us also to stay away from relevant sites of conduction uh, recording to avoid permanent damage, as you said. 
So the strategy here would be to go on and to deliver uh, with the ablation catheter energy to these areas where we had kind of later, latest responses to deep mapping. So there is going to be quite of an extensive procedure, I'm afraid. And of course, uh, after having done that, we will go on and proceed to remap because of course we need to prove that the areas that we think are pertinent to conduction delay have been abolished following the ablation. So this would be the strategy. Are there any questions from your side? Paolo, how, did, um, how are you using the QRS morphology of that induced VT to inform your procedure? Is that a consideration? Well, uh, you know, you, the, what, you can, what can you say? It, it, all, it says the exit is not truly epical. Can we, can we put it in the big screen, the, the inducible VT, because they are somehow, uh, uh, okay. The, the overall axis suggests that we have an initial exit from this car to the inferior wall, but of course the question here is, how does it transit through this car? It, it obviously exits to the inferior wall. It does exit a little bit before the apex, uh, how does it go through, it's unknown. So, you know, the morphology is, in a sense, I wouldn't say misleading, but uh, we have a kind of a superior axis, right bundle VT with a late transition. So I would just hint to a mid-septal uh, type of exit towards the inferior wall, but again, I'm pretty confident that the true action takes place not in the inferior wall, but along the septum, probably traveling inferiorly and exiting to the inferior wall. Uh, what are your thoughts, uh, Bill? I, I think that probably answered the question, Paolo. Thank you. I, I wanted to, uh, to press you to, a little bit on your strategy for ablation. Would you ablate all the areas that exhibited delay with uh, deep mapping or just the, the most prominent ones? kind of like an ILAM strategy if you were doing this in sinus rhythm? Uh, I'll try to say, uh, let's say just to put it in, into the color range between yellow and blue. Uh, so try to kind of sub-select. I, I, there are three major places of delay that I would like to target. And I think that also the intermediate eyelid of the yellow should be treated. So as you see, we see, it's a kind of a wide area of ablation, I think. And can you talk a little bit about your um, RF strategy, your power settings, duration? Yeah, I'll try to stay within the range of 50 watts, trying to stay uh, at, at least 30 to 45 seconds at each spot, try to keep it stable and then to move to the next one. And we see that you have intracardiac ultrasound uh, up as well. Uh, Will you be using that during the RF? I think so. I think that Peter will yeah, well, stop I, me. That, that's what we do. We just follow if the ablation is on, especially if it is higher power outputs. We try to see, uh, uh, I would say, this is this uh, abrupt uh, bubble formation that might indicate that there is uh, too much of the energy going into the tissue. But uh, on the other hand, uh, this 50 watts means that we are ablating on the scar tissue. This is not the settings that you would use for the healthy myocardium, because if you would use this kind of high power for a healthy myocardium with high uh, electrograms, that the risk of popping is extremely high. If this is, we are ablating within the scar tissue, that's why the power setting is. Can, can we uh, go into this issue? Can we please, Federico, have a simultaneous uh, display of the voltage map? So to reinforce the notion that Peter has done. Is this the deep map or the sinus map, Federico? No, the, the late activity. They're both oh. late maps. No, no, they're not both. Uh, no, I think deep. that, yeah, he's, he's getting there, okay. 
So it's just to confirm that we will be uh, mainly working on areas where the uh, voltage is below 0.5 millivolts. Yeah, the voltage I map think is on just the right to reinforce there. the point yeah. there. So, so on the right hand there is a voltage map, on the left hand there is an activation map with this deep mapping, with this annotating of the last extra stimuli uh, or the extra stimuli. There are no more for questions fr from the podium, uh, from the auditorium. Uh, so, uh, would you like to start the bl just uh, start the blading, or should we switch to another lab? No, we can start ablating now, and then you can switch because it will take us uh, some some time. So, which you want to use transeptal or retrograde? Oh, uh, I'll go transeptal preferentially. Okay. I'll pull the grid. Provide Yeah. Uh, let's hold on, we just do some, some ablation there. Oh, okay. Just give us about three minutes, just we start the first application to see, see the, the electrograms. Uh, and then you can uh, switch to another lab because that will be a lot of ablations that has to be done. Too many people speaking. Peter, can you also tell uh, us this no. patient has severe ventricular sure. dysfunction. Sure. Are, you, are you requiring any hemodynamic support, any pharmacologic hemodynamic support under anesthesia? We can start, but someone doesn't call me and someone doesn't hear me. I, I think I'm, I, I was in there transiently. Joseph, Joseph, do you hear us? Yeah. Yes, I, I do. We, we see you. We, we see you. Yes, I, I am speaking, but nobody hears me. Okay, we hear you now. Joseph, we hear you now. Okay. Oh, okay, so uh, we are here with uh, Miguel and with Jana and uh, we have patient with previous failed ablation of ectopy from the LV summit. We actually did mapping uh, last time, we did mapping of uh, left cusp, right cusp, commissure below the, uh, uh, below the cusps and also in great cardiac vein. And we did apply finally in great cardiac vein, there was some transient effect, but because the procedure was lengthy, we, we abandoned the case with the prospect of alcohol ablation. And this is a 58-year-old female, no uh, major comorbidities, uh, normal ejection fracture, no valvuloplasty, if we can continue. Uh, she had 22% PVCs. Uh, after the ablation, uh, the uh, number of PVCs decreased, but uh, when she does something, when she has some uh, exercise or whatever, there is a lot of ectopy afterwards. But uh, in general, there is about 2 or 4% of ectopy on her, but during the exercise, and she, she is troubled by this. I mean, these are just maps from the previous. You see that we map also great cardiac vein. We applied, we applied uh, below the uh, valve, and the, the, the effect was only from great cardiac vein, which, was, uh, which had prematurity 19 milliseconds. So that's basically, uh, that's it. Um, and she's, yeah, she's on medication of beta blockers. So I give word now to uh, Miguel. Okay. We will tell you what we've done until now. So um, what we have done so far is first thing, uh, we advanced a uh, decanab. Uh, decapolar catheter in the coronary sinus and uh, engaged the uh, coronary sinus distally to the great cardiac vein and the anterior interventricular vein. Uh, we had also a pentaray in retroiortically position in the left ventricular outflow tract. And um, if you can see the signals there in the, uh, in the pruca, you can see how the earliest signal was mapped to a CS56 uh, or 34 with a little bit of polarity reversal between 5.6 and 3.4. Um, it was premature by short of uh, around 20 milliseconds. And if you see the simultaneous signals obtained with pentaray uh, in the other side of the, uh, uh, in the endocardial side of the LV outflow was much later. 
perhaps a little bit of far field if you see in penta ray 15 and 13 it's a little bit of earlier but most of the signals are very late uh, if you see on carto can you show the carto um, clearly the the um, activation time is much earlier at the proximal aspect of the aiv so what we've done next um, is if you could review the uh, the venograms um, we looked at um, where the earliest signals in the decanav were and then try to find branches uh, of, of, of the AIV that go intramurally there. And sure enough, uh, you know, this, this patient, no, you were, you were fine playing that one. Can you play that? Oh, play the previous, so play the previous that so we showed when we had the, and the, yeah, go, go back to the beginning. So we show all the, all the work. So this is trying to put the deck and have in different veins, but you can see in this shot, how there is a vein branch that takes off right at the uh, second to last uh, electrode from the EP star catheter. And that happens to be right between electrodes uh, three, four, and five, six in Decanav. So that's, in a, that's a very, very much a good candidate vein to map. Uh, what we have done now is try to get the EP star into that vein. That vein is super small. So with a lot of work, uh, as Joseph was talking, I think I got it in. So the next one, next, next floral. The very last one, yeah. So in the last one, I got the tip, the tip of the EP start looks like it's outside the AIV and it's getting into close to that, that branch. This is where I am now. Now she happened, now we only have signals from the, from the very distal electrode and we can paste paste from the distal uh, ep star and see what kind of paste map we get and i can try to finagle it deeper into that vein how does it look that doesn't uh, not as good as from the vein huh what what kind of numbers do you get uh, as far as paste map V2 is different, it's worse. Uh, from, the vein, from, the vein, from the AIV, it looked better. 95, so this is 94, 95. From the AIV itself, we're getting 96, 98. Uh, again, this is within the error of the measurement. I'm gonna try, let me go back and forth. Let me try to see if I can get it deeper. The vein is too small, so I'll, I'll do my best. Show me, stop pacing and show me big floral. All right, I'm going to try to see if I can get it a little bit deeper into that vein. I'm going to advance the lima there. And I'll gently pull back. The alternative we discussed would be to use this uh, isolated uh, vision wire to cannulate the vein with uh, wire and then uh, yeah. piece from there. We, of course, you cannot get uh, such a nice signals like from the, from yeah. the multiple uh, catheter. Maybe a little more contrast. I, I think it's the vein is very small, so our, our, I prefer not to mess it up and maybe do the, ne the rest of the intramural vein mapping with, uh, with the angioplasty wire, if we can. Let me see. See, it's not quite in there. It's, it's just at the very close to it, but not quite. Let me see if I can maneuver a little bit the lima. Maybe I got in, maybe I didn't. So vision wire is made to collect signals from the tip. I I don't necessarily use the vision wire. I you know with a with a a uh, standard uh, angioplasty wire you can configure it still as a as an angioplasty, as a unipolar catheter, and see, I'm trying to get in that vein, but I'm not getting in there. So we're going to go with an angioplasty wire. Uh, this is vision wire. Okay, let's give it some shape. And the idea is to get into that vein and map with the wire deeper intramurally. The nice thing 
that we know now is that the vein is small, so I don't think we're going to need double balloon. The vein is very small, so if we get good signals from the vision wire, we don't. We probably would be able to deliver a good lesion with uh, alcohol with a single balloon. So, no, oh, let's see. Do you have a? Give me a needle, just a needle. Let me see. I'm trying to put some shape on the wire. Yes, like a needle, a needle. Uh, yeah. Uh, I got, let me see, I got enough, I got, I got a nice shape. Okay, so we're going to take the EP star out and leave the Lima where it is. So just to clarify our, our procedural approach, I have a, an Agilis in the main CS, then I have a Lima uh, catheter distally, and I have the decanav in there. If the decanav becomes too much of a disruption, we'll take it out. Sometimes it gets in the way of our ability to get into the, into the different veins. Um, so I need then a um, two by six balloon, over the wire two by six balloon, and we'll advance at once the, uh, the wire and the balloon. Two by six, I think, it would be enough. The veins are very distensible. Yeah, but I need I need the wire. I need the balloon. I don't want to advance. Let me see. This is the smallest. This is the smallest. Can you pull my mask over my nose? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there was a PVC there. I don't know that it's of any use now. 2.5 works, yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Or give me the two. Two, 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 two. Two is better. Two. Two by eight. So, um, yeah, most most balloons uh, for angioplasty come at eight, uh, eight millimeter uh, length. I typically use six because it allows you a little bit more flexibility um, if you want to deliver alcohol in just the proximal part. Um, and it has, occasionally it's easier to make it take a right angle. So let's flush that. One other thing that I want to emphasize is the LAO steep uh, coddle. So we are 43 degrees LAO, 33 degree coddle. If you don't, if you're not coddled enough, you would not open up this corner of AIV GCV. Any questions from the audience no, or the panel? Um, okay, good. Yeah, so just take this out. It has a little stylet and then flush. You flush there? Flush. Yes, yeah. So no, sailing, 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 sailing first. And then we need the end deflator to inflate the balloon. Okay, good. Yeah, it is, it is, it is, it is. It's good. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. So fill it up with contrast. So what I'm going to do now is preload the balloon with the wire so that I advance both uh, at once. Uh, and the idea is that I would get, I would get, you can do half and half. It's hardly ever. The balloon is so small and the vein is so small you hardly ever see it inflate. That's good. Okay, so I'm preloading the wire into the balloon. Okay, I got it preloaded. Hold this for a second. Now, pull back the wire a little bit. All right, now give me a little bit of wire. All right, keep it there. So now, 
I'm going into that. I'm advancing, advancing, advancing. There we go. Now we have, this is where it gets. So we need to see first where the balloon is relative to the wire. So let me show you. Let me check one thing on, no, no, advance. The balloon is, where is the balloon? There. The balloon is there. So you hold the wire for a second. I'm going to get the balloon there. And now pull the wire back and now try to get the wire into that branch, which is, you, know, you got to make it turn there. So when it gets, when it gets, give me some wet four by four. Oh, you're beautiful. Stay there, stay there, stay there. So beautiful. So, you know, an amazing display of skill. Dr. Kautner has had it there. So now we, we want to make this straight. Get a, and now am I going to advance the balloon very slowly, very slowly, very slowly. This is, you got to sweet talk to the balloon so that it doesn't act on you. Uh, it may be a good idea to give some, con well, actually, let's see if we can get a signal from here. Is this contrast? Yeah, it's contrast. I'm going to shoot some binogram here to show that indeed we are in the branch we wanted to be in. So red is reference needle. So now we need to configure the angioplasty as a unipolar, angioplasty wire as a unipolar electrode. Uh, this works better like this, so that this will not. I shouldn't bleed, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so. Then the black um, black component here. Miguel, th so there is now one question. we should be able. To what type and yes. size of balloon and the wire you use? This is a vision wire which is made by Biotronic. That it, that. It's uh, it's uh, arrow. It's. Oh. Yes, you know what it's, it's, oh. it's the whole in arrow. You know this is I yeah. It, the, do you think I I hit the? Mm? No, let me just. Is, do you think is this they touch yeah, exactly. the sheath? Yeah, I think it the sheath, yeah. Oh, hold, hold pressure, I guess. We got. So uh, we have now uh, in the in the Pruka we have a unipolar. Just hold, I guess. Sorry. We have a unipolar signal with a kind of a late component, late potential uh, fractionation there. And in the upstroke of it, not, but we need the PVC. So actually, we can paste from the wire. We know what we're going to get, but uh, paste from the wire, it tends to have sometimes high impedance. Let me see how much wire we have out there. Okay, I, we are in there. The balloon, I'm not sure where it is. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's, the balloon, the wire is clearly engaged in that uh, branch and the balloon kind of wants to go. I'm advancing a little bit more of it. It's, uh, even though we don't appreciate it here, it's a right turn, right angle that it needs to make. I'll take another shot of contrast there. There's another vein lower, yeah. Yeah, there's a bigger lower vein. It may be too proximal. That may, that may be annular. Um, anyway, do we have a signal? Can we paste from the wire now that I have a lot more wire in? And then maybe give uh, high impedance. You know, this doesn't happen with the regular BMW. The cheaper BMW wire does the trick just as well. Uh, but uh, Joseph was pointing out in some of the frames you see there's an earlier vein flat like that. And I think part of the difficulty seeing it before might have been the decanav in there. But I like the fact that this vein was this vein was taking off from right the part of the of the decanav that we really wanted. Uh, I don't know that the balloon is engaged in that vein. So let's do one thing. Let's go negative pressure here. 
uh, we will leave you struggling yes. with this small vein and we would like to switch to uh, the other case uh, at the Homolka hospital. Sounds good. Is it all right just now? Sounds good. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so the problem is I need to make sure we don't lose that wire and I think I need to make maybe I'm going to advance the lima over it. This came back a lot. Good support, yeah. The Agilis is not stable. The Lima is clearly not stable. Hello, hello, it is Hoboka. Like Can you hear us? A ty slajdy tam dejte, jo, to jsou hned. OK. Hello, hello. Ah, we are here, OK. So, hello everybody, good afternoon from Homolka. And uh, we have a first live case from, from us, uh, intramural mapping of PVC. So, can you hear us? Yeah, we can. Yes, OK, thanks. So. Let's let's move on. So intramural mapping of PVC again from near LV summit area, from some intramural very near area. So let me introduce the case. Here is Fermin Gar Garcia with us uh, from University of uh, Pennsylvania. Easy patient, little older, 72, but nothing very special. We have two years history of monomorphic PVCs from outflow from out outflow morphology. I will show you later ECG. Of course, so this is this is quite frequent, 23% about on Holter ECG um, with beta blocker with only let, little help. Uh, nothing special on TTE, uh, let's say borderline ejection fraction, trivial, trivial regurgitations, uh, hypertension on two drugs, uh, nothing, nothing important. So this is ECG, you can look at the morphology, uh, which is um, uh, quite uh, uh, comparative to L left side, right bundle, morphology with transition, nearly no transition. You will see with, uh, uh, with, uh, on the, in the room uh, ECG uh, on procedure, little, little more prominent transition on V2. So this is from department ECG, which is little less prominent transition, but let's say you will see later it's more V2 transition. but. For sure, right bundle morphology on, on chest leads and a little positive lead one. So this is this is like something from there you like to map. I will show you later back. Uh, this is like you see the quite frequent on department monitor. So so uh, so Fermin Garcia will will show you uh, the carto mapping uh, with smart touch thermocool catheter with uh, angio uh, angio uh, coronary sinus. Uh, multipolar mapping with distal branching great cardiac vein. So let's let's move to the table. I leave it here to more discussion about the uh, the ECG. You can you can see, and uh, now we can tell you from the from the table. Okay, so so we are here with with. So maybe we can uh, start with the with the venogram. The perform from the first step we did. Um, was to do a venogram. So can we go to this here? Uh, uh, can you... Ty venogramy ještě tady here. Uh, let's show the first venogram. Pusty mm -hmm. Yeah, just show the first venogram. Go up. Mm -hmm. Just go to the beginning okay. of the case, yeah. So play that. So that's our first. We we'll access max tohle, with... Uh, we got access with a large agilos. And you can see, always take a first picture to make sure there's good anatomy, etc. And you can see it's uh, like, wow. uh, go to the second one. Mm -hmm. That's an LAO shot. You can see that the AAV turn to the gray cardiac vein is very acute. You have the AAV, then a very acute turn in the gray cardiac vein. So go to the next, uh, maybe this one. Mm -hmm. So we ended putting deeper the agilos and we put a mapping catheter in the epicardium. Um, via the AIV and the great cardiac vein now. Uh, if you want to go to the beginning of the case on the Pruka, go to the Pruka and show the beginning of the case that we only had the map it, just the map it. 
Go to the review screen. This screen. Go to the review screen. Ukážeme ten začátek nějaký. No. Yeah, right there. That's at the beginning of the case. You can put that on the on the big screen Máme for them. Big pruka, That's okay. Please. Big pruka. Review pruka on the main screen. There you go. So that's the beginning of the case. So what you can see here is like we are. If you measure, please measure it. We are on time. And if this was a true LV Summit PVC, you would be minus 45. This may be minus 10. Okay. So we decided to lift this catheter here. Now go back to the fluoroscopy again, and uh, go down here. Go down. Dalshi, dalshi, nastro. Yeah. Go down. Uh, yeah. Maybe that, hit that. So play, play. Yeah, so you see here, we found a very big septal branch, but it's very distal. And we map that septal branch and it's, it's late. And there is, there is no, no good signal. So we kept looking and we kept looking and we thought that what it's gonna give us the best would be a very basal annular branch. And that's where we put then um, what we have right now. Now, if go to the live right now, go to our live view right now. Okay, I just show you in the live view. There's three catheters. There is a mappet in the AIV and the gray cardiac vein. Uh, no, uh, okay. There's a mappet on the AIV and the gray cardiac vein. There is a vision wire in the first septal or the LV annular branch. I would call this the LV annular branch. And then we place an ablation catheter opposite to the closest side, which is the vision wire. Now, go to the best activation we had, please. Go to the best on Pruka, and then we can show it. Uh, there you go, best, yeah, best timing. So this is the best timing we have. You can see that we have a uni good unipolar signal. It's at most 20 or so. Uh, the signal on the endocardium it's not terribly early. In fact, it's after, but there is some fractionated component in front of it. And that seems to fit all CS910 for the bipolar, the unipolar, and the say. So probably something is coming in between here. So I guess this is a very similar case to what they're having in the other lab, except we're gonna try a different strategy. And the strategy we're gonna find is if now you go to intracardiac echo, please. Velký echo, big okay. echo. If you go to intracardiac echo, I'm gonna start. Uh, That's a big one now. Yeah, it just fell off. Do we have intracardiac echo? So this is right cosplit valve. Okay, that's LV. So I'm coming up, just clockwise, LV, LV, the top of the LV osseum. That's the left coronary cost there and the left main. You can see the left main right there. And I counter a little bit, and we're right below at the base of the LV osseum in the endocardium, right there. Okay? And what that is, if you now go to fluoroscopy, okay, okay in fluoroscopy, is the closest we have okay. yeah. to we that have wire. Okay, that's the closest we have to that wire. And we have a very decent um, stability. And the question is, are we close enough to the side of interest that if we ablate here, this will work? Knowing that we're not on a perfect spot, uh, neither is the wire the alternative here, obviously, would be to simply try to do alcohol. That's the two options. So this is what we have. This is the process of mapping the three aspects. Um, and, uh, and then I uh, don't know if anybody has any questions, but our thought was that getting here, we were going to try to apply from here. Furman, did you look in the sinuses of Valsalva? Can you repeat the question, please? Did you did you look in within the yeah, sinuses late, Valsalva late. above the uh, okay. late? It was way later than here. The left coronary cost was later than here. So, okay. So we did map everywhere. We have no, an area, come, as you said, Bill, that's earlier in the endocardium, but it's not precurious. And 
it's the closest we have to that wire, so we were thinking uh, we start here and give it a try, okay? So we're gonna do what, 30 watts? Yeah, 30 watts, okay. and the, fl uh, the, oh, the flush, how much? 17, that he said. Okay, 30, 30 watts. Okay. Trošku to tam pálí teďka, jo, aby jsme to vydrželi, jo, chvilinku to vydržte, jo, už to bude. Try not to talk, not talking. Vydržte, jo, oblační body, a tam nevidíme. Fermin, uh, what, uh, what sheet uh, no, do you use for sheet. retrograde access? Any special? Yeah, I normally like a long SL1 or a long SL0 or SR0. We didn't have that, so we're just using a long arrow sheet. Long, uh, it means uh, 90? The, you or know, the standard care for transeptal, and the long one, I think it's 88. 88 yeah. so it's it's arm, arm metallic, arm metallic. Uh, this one is an F, arrow, but uh, the long uh, SL one, uh, if you ask the, the Sanyud, it comes in a regular length, and a long, I think it's 88 centimeters. Yeah, yeah. And, and this one, we have 80 centimeters, nine French yeah. uh, uh, metallic arm. Yeah. You can see the location is still there, right opposite to that wire. Go to 40 for a minute, please. Uh, we have 73 seconds now. Yes, to 120. And you want constantly to look at ice. Make sure you don't fall off, because if you fall off, you go to the left uh, coronary cause. So I'm always 90 countering. seconds? 120. No. OK, fine. 90 seconds. OK, 90 seconds. Yeah. I was convinced. OK. OK, now we're going to wait and see what happens. So I think it's the same approach that they're describing in the other lab. It's a very similar PVC. It's mapped to the LV annular branch. Okay, I will show you again the fluoro. You see the three levels of activation, true epi, because that's the AIV and the gray cardiac vein. Then you have the first septal, the LV annular with the wire, and you have the endocardium. If this PVC was 45 milliseconds in the AIV, I think the distance here is too big. This would not have worked out. But because we found an earlier spot in the wire, then you're so close that if you do a lesion from the end, though, even if you are after the QRS, it's going to work. This is exactly what I said on my lecture, and this, is, and this is when you give it a try. Now, if this fails and the PVC keeps coming back or remove exit more towards the epicardium, then you have to figure out what other alternative you're going to use. Perhaps put in the catheter inside of the, on the vein, or perhaps uh, doing alcohol here because I am already selectively cannulated. So that's the other advantage of using a, a catheter to deliver the wire. We're already selectively cannulated, so, so we can change here for an angioplasty wire and put the wire and put the balloon and not waste time. But I think this is going to work. And that's the, I think, the key to find the earliest endocardial spot. If you get close to it, it's so close that you're going to get it. And now you would have never ablated here because it's not that early in the endocardium. You can see on the review. Can you put the review for the signals, please? It's very important. We put, can you put the review screen, not the live screen? If a PVC comes back, we swear we will tell you. Look here. Here, here you have. Take out the caliper. Just put it. No, no. Uh, put, put that. The signal no, that no, we. No, you no, just no, change no, it. No, no. Let's find the PVC with the signals, please, and put it on the review screen. Just go to the best one, the best one we had. You already marked it. Yeah, that timing. Oh, by the way, why don't you show the pa the, pa the, pa the, pa the pace map? Show the pace map, please. So this is the last one. Yeah, no, I want to show the pace map. Here, this is pace map from the wire. Go to the 12 litre kg, go up, go up. No, no, 12 litre kg, just go up. Yeah, put it at 100. Yeah, so you can see there, there's always going to be some artifact because a unipolar wire creates artifact. But here you have the, 12, the pace map from the wire and the PVC next to it. And no, wait a second. Can you put the review screen live? They're not seeing it. It's there. It's there. No, no it's, it's, not, not. it's not. Now, now it is. Now it's review. Okay? okay, so that's it. That's the pace map side by side from the wire, and that's a pretty good pace map. 
So you, you know that this is a focal area inside of the muscle intramural, and you're very close from the endo. Why not just try a lesion from the endo? Again, the distance to the earliest side on the wire. Now go to the best pace map, the best activation we had after we look at every spot on the endo, just to show them. Best timing, please. Yeah, best timing, down, down. Yeah, there you go. That, you can put it at 200, OK? Put it at 200. OK, that's it. That was our best timing yeah, in the so end. Now, you could say maybe there's something there yeah, that's interesting, and, and we could ablate from here. It's not the most impressive late endocardial activation I've seen. The ones I showed my lecture more impressive. But this is not early in the end, though. But that's how you get close enough. And then, of course, pay attention to catheter stability and everything. And I think this technique, uh, it works. Um, now, I leave it up to you guys to ask any questions. Fermin, do you have a uh, unipolar uh, signal from ablation catheter, or uh, I haven't uh, seen it? Yeah, in Carto, maybe. Do you have the unipolar signal on the ablation catheter, please, on Carto? Yeah, we're going to get it for you. He's going to look for a point, find a PVC. Uh, there it is. And be before switching to uh, to your uh, the other lab at, at Homolka, no, the last question uh, from me is: they come, they come uh, so. You use the contact force 13, 14 in case of failure or recurrence. Are you able to increase, or was it maximum contact force? What can be achieved at the, at, at this side? Yeah. So that's a absolutely very good question. Can you just quickly put the fluoroscopy on the screen? Put the fluoroscopy on the screen. The, this is the first thing we did. We selected an FJ, uh, sorry, an F curve catheter because you can see that the aorta is dilated. You see that big curve on the aorta. If you don't support the catheter, when you try to bring it up, it goes down. So here, the best we could get was 15 to 20. I cannot get any more contact force with the maximum catheter deflection, and that's because the aorta is dilated. So I believe this sheath, it's a little bit too soft. If you had used an SL1, you would get more than 20 contact force. Now, do you need 40? I don't think so. I think that this, you need what's normal. Normal is 20, OK? Uh, 15, 20, good stability, you can see in Carto, just go back to Carto, that the catheter, I'm not touching the catheter, just put Carto, guys, I'm not touching the catheter, the catheter is on its own, it's like a stereo taxis. I'm not touching it, and <laughs> the stability is perfect, because you have aligned the catheter in a way with the aorta and the tissue, that you have a vector orientation pointing up with 30 grams of force, and the catheter is very stable. So this is what's important for this area. You need to pay attention to these three things, the vector orientation, the stability, and the contact force. And I don't think you need more aggressive. I don't think you need 70 or anything, because uh, you don't need higher power with it 35, because this is the earliest side. You found the earliest side on the wire. Just put back the fluoroscopy, please. Fluoroscopy. And, 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 and you found it in the intramural space. And you can see there, you're not that far uh, from, from uh, let me just blow this up so you guys can see it better. You see there, that's it. You have the three things. You have the epi, the intramural, and the ablation catheter. You're trying to target that wire. And that is maybe half a centimeter. So this is standard contact force, standard RF, should work. If it doesn't work, then you know you have a problem, and then you're going to have to figure out and then do it several lesions or whatever. But when you find this, it's just going to work. All right, thank you very much. It was a straightforward case, and uh, so con congratulations. And uh, we may switch to the other room. Straightforward. <laughs> okay. Okay, Peter, you want to? Can you show me force, please? Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we do hear you. Can you hear too. us? Okay, probably yes, okay. So, uh, hello from the second room. I'm here with Elad Alter, my friend from Tel Aviv. 
Yeah. And uh, also Petru uh, was my chief in the lab when I was here. So is my chief when I'm outside the lab, I'm his boss. Okay, so uh, we have a, a VT case on the table. The patient was transferred uh, to our hospital just Saturday after some VT storming. And actually we decided to, uh, to uh, put it on the table and actually we discussed with a lot uh, the possibility uh, to, uh, to create this um, HD mapping, like high density uh, mapping. And actually we tried to understand if this patient needs to have uh, sub mechanical support. And actually based on pain as the uh, score from Philadelphia from um, Pascal, actually, a lot of publications. So actually, this score is uh, up to 31. So this guy, uh, this patient, was uh, assessed to have like 21 or 20 uh, pain set score. So actually, we decided to, uh, when we put it on the table, so we decided, uh, because of could be prolonged, uh, prolonged uh, procedure, so we decided to uh, put uh, um, uh, the uh, percutaneous support system, which is uh, tandem hard. We use it several times, actually, even during this workshop, we showed uh, the, uh, the functionality, so I don't want to spend much time. The patient has uh, ejection fraction um, uh, around 11, uh, no, uh, 18, 18 percent, and actually he is after myocardial infarction since 2017. He got ICD as a primary prevention of sudden cardiac death, but actually till uh, this week, actually maybe March uh, 13, he got like storming, he got like 20, 20 uh, discharges of like appropriate tachycardia, appropriate discharge, and uh, I think the uh, cycle end was very, very uh, short, uh, so VT was very fast. So it was, cycle end was 240 milliseconds. Uh, so right now we are running the tandem with minimum support. Uh, actually, we, we introduce all the catheters, uh, uh, second transcendental, because this tandem needs to have one inflow uh, cannula, uh, even if left atrium. And we have advantage having uh, actually comparing impella, we have no any other catheter in left ventricle body. So I would stop here right now for interaction to don't waste the time and actually I will ask a lot to, to, uh, to uh, go through all the procedure what we did since the beginning. Okay, thank you, thank you Peter and thank you um, everyone. So again, we have an 80 year old patient with a large anterior infarction um, that came with um, VT storm. EF is around 15, 20%. Can you, can you actually slave the screens? Can we see the monitors? Is that poss as a possibility? Mm -hmm. Um, let's see if you can, you see the ice, right? Okay, so the, you, see, you're see, you see the ice, right? Okay, so on the ice, you can see the ice is in the left ventricle. Mm -hmm. It's in the left ventricle, and you are looking um, on, the le on the septum of the left ventricle. You can see a little bit of um, hyperechogenic area just deeper than the endocardium. It's just in the subendocardium, and deeper to this is the RV. Okay, now you can see that this area is very thin. There is also a smoke there, as you, as you can see. There's no, um, there's no clot that we could see. And we're running an ACT that is pretty high. Now let's, um, let's tell you like, you know, what was the strategy in this, uh, in this patient. So he's an 80 year old guy, frail, tandem heart was placed. Um, we, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer that procedures in, in this case should be um, strategic and short. Um, the long time on the table is not, is, not a good, is not a good thing. So we identified with ICE where is the area of the scar. We went directly with there with the multi-electrode mapping catheter with a transeptal approach. Um, let's look on the cardo map, please. And can you put on the left side, can you switch to um, voltage? No, no, just no, yeah, a bipolar. And uh, can you do custom? Not here, do custom. Okay, so it's 0.1 to, point, point to point 0.5. Just want to show you the extent of his, uh, of his voltage abnormality, which is consistent with what you see on the echo. So the apex is uh, completely scarred and thin and akinetic. There is even like something that looks like an aneurysm, and it goes all the way to the base, and it's consistent with what we see here. Okay, a lot of, um, a, a lot of scar, a large area of scar. If we switch to the LAT, let's switch to to the LAT map. Okay, good. 
So how do, cre do we create this LAT? So uh, can you choose, can you just choose a point, on, choose one of the purple points and show the select point viewer? Okay, good. Let me see, do you see the select point viewer? So as you know, there is a lot of far field and near field. Usually the wavefront is going to take the largest potential, which will be the near field. So what we do is we close the window of interest as you can see here, you can see where the window starts. The window starts after the QRS, after the far field. So we are mapping all the time the near field. We're mapping the near field. So we did this, collected enough points. The mapping was, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And let's run the propagation map when we know that we have not too many points, but the points that we have are, are annotated well. Just go to two here. Uh -huh. So as opposed to the voltage map, which is not revealing so much apart from showing us a very large area of scar, you can see here that we actually drew some lines there. These are artificial lines that we drew to show how the wavefront comes in this patient that has a baseline left bundle branch block um, through, uh, how does it come to these areas of late activation? So it looks like there is an area of uh, channel that is more in the mid, mid, uh, mid anterior wall to apex here. It goes from there and it, and it spreads um, north and south to activate um, those areas of late, of late activation. And similarly, there is something that comes from, from the top. Um, we, now, can you show now the, um, now one second actually. Okay, uh, let's, let's see the review on Pruka. Let's see the review on Pruka. Can you see the review on Pruka? Okay, good. So this is, uh, this is just one example in this location. You see the late, activation, the, the late activation. Let's choose one of the examples. We marked one, uh, go down for a second, on the log. Go down on the log. Um, it says PVC change morphology something, example of, let, let's choose this one. So this one, I just wanna show you the limitation of what we do in general. So the first bit, you don't see much late activation. You see lavas or fractionate potentials. So if we, if we look on the activation map of this bit, nothing is going to look so late. The next bit is a PVC. And in the PVC, all of a sudden, you see that you have late activation. So this is the limitation of what we do with any rhythm that we choose. We just need to be aware that what we do is not, is, is not perfect because um, VT doesn't start from sinus rhythm. It starts from a PVC that comes from somewhere. Now, if you go, go down for a second, show us the point when we marked, when we did the pacing. Where is it? Change morphology. Okay. So we are pacing from this... Um, channel that is marked by the white uh, lines that activates north and south, you can see that you have short steam to QRS with a basal exit, positive in lead two and three, and then a long steam to QRS with a different morphology. Also suggesting that that can be like a turning point, okay? Um, the other interesting thing about this area on ice, this is also an area when you see transition from a completely thin tissue to an area of more survived myocardium on the sides. Um, again, could be like sort of sync mismatch there. So what we chose to do in this sick patient, instead of homogenizing the entire thing that um, not going to be safe for him, we're going to miss dinner. So we decided to ablate those areas where the activation uh, comes and activate the latest area. Now, can you please put the, the ablation points? Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe do transparency or glass view so they, they can see the lesions. Okay, so you see the lesions, right? So the lesions are, um, are, um, are in this bottom channel and upper channel. And then, so the all amount of ablation that we did here um, was seven minutes, seven and a half minutes. Now, the reason being is that we saw also on ice that we're making a lesion that is almost pre-pop. The impedance during ablation was relatively low in the 100 range. So we didn't have to stay uh, for, very, for very long um, in this case. Then we remapped. We took the ablation, the pentary catheter. Let's go to the remap. So yeah, let's go to the remap. Okay. Uh, can you now don't play, don't, don't do the glass mode? Can we just see? Uh -huh, so we can see the points. Just press on the glass mode. Uh huh. So do you see the no? So can we just see the points that we acquired? So no glass mode, no transparency. And go to visualization setup. 
and just show us the points. Okay. So we, we took a lot of points again, and you can see that all of this area of late activations in the middle disappeared. Where we did see some late activation, not as late, is, is here, is at the very base. And right now we have an ablation catheter, and we went back to these areas and we're selectively ablating them. So the whole, uh, the whole procedure is, uh, is relatively short in a sick patient like this. You go strategically, you find this area, and, uh, and we target this. Um, we try to induce. We could not induce up front, could be because of the tandem heart, could be because the patient was admitted to the hospital and received an amiodarone, um, but we couldn't induce, so induction is not, is not an endpoint. Um, but uh, elimination of these areas of slowly conducting, um, I don't want to use the name channel, but slowly conducting areas, um, it looks like was, um, was achieved. Um, so we are toward the, the end of our case. Um, I don't know if you have any, uh, any comments uh, to us. Any questions, guys? Maybe you can, we can show the ice again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot. If you pace in that area where you didn't ablate, does it still capture? Like where your catheter is right now, if you just pace there, does it capture and conduct Let, out? Let's just pace. I think it is going to capture because you have electrograms there. Mm -hmm. um, let's say uh, pace there. Can we pace uh, the, the ablation distal at like, I don't know, 800 millisecond? Yeah. It still capture. Let's lower the output. What output are you on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go, go slowly down until you lose capture. Okay, so, no, no, that's it. You, you, you lost capture, you don't have to continue. So as opposed to the first time, here we only captured with short stim to QRS. We did not capture with long stim to QRS bill. So do you think that's an indication that you've gotten rid of the, the slow channel? I think so, because we, you look now on the same window, minus 73 to plus 84 milliseconds. So it's similar to the before ablation and after ablation. And all these areas of late activation in the middle of this very low voltage area disappeared. has disappeared. You do have uh, signals there, but when you, and you can capture them. So it's not a core isolation of this area, but when you capture them, you don't capture them with long stem to QRS. So I would think that this is suggestive of, um, of um, reduction or elimination of the slow conducting, slow conducting. Um, areas there. Do you look for any more lava potentials or evoked delayed responses? Yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll go up for a second so you'll see where we, let me just stand on floor. So uh, do you want to switch to uh, for pentalav? A lot? No, let me just take you to these okay. areas okay. which were late. And we, we came again, so after we remapped, we found those areas in purple. Mm -hmm. We went back there and, and ablated them. You can still see there are lavas there. But at the beginning, if you just, you know what, can you just switch, make the main view the first map? Yeah, go to this point, uh-huh. Okay, remove the transparency so we can, uh, we can see. And just choose mm -hmm. a point. Mm -hmm. Just choose a point where I'm staying. And look on the activation there. I don't know, let, let's, uh, let's look to an area that was more purple, like... Uh, Under the line, yes. Like here, okay? Perfect. So Ooh. this is the activation I have here, which I only see far field, I don't see much. If you just choose a point there, yeah. Mm -hmm. do, do you see these late potentials on the right side of Cardo? Guys, do you see Cardo? Multiple. Yeah. Do you see? Yes. So those has disappeared. Um, what does it mean? I don't know if it's, uh, it's something uh, that's going to be uh, helpful to this patient. I don't know, but, but this is what we <laughs> did. Um, uh, it should be. And on the map that we're looking at right now, the little dark, the black tags, what do those represent? The black, the black tags represent, a, 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 actually, let me show you. Go to tools, please. Go to tools um, on, uh, yeah, open scar mm -hmm. setting. So every, every, every bipolar electrogram below 0 0.02, so 20 microvolts, will be marked with black. Why 20? Because it's, double, it's pretty much dub, um, double the noise le level in this, uh, in this lab. How do you use that information, Elad? You know, the, the, reason I, the reason I use it is that when you, when you collect 
when you allow the mapping system to collect any voltage amplitude, you, you are sensitive to collect a lot of noise. So you want to you want to put like a threshold of uh, what what elect, you know what signals are probably um, to, uh, below the noise level of this of the lab. Twenty microvolts, you know, and, and you remember, Bill, like you know, it's not that it's we used to look on much higher. Um, uh, our noise was much higher, you know, years ago. So it's not um, it, it's not a overly um, low number. Uh, but it, it allows us to see, uh, to eliminate um, annotation. The mapping system will annotate those electrograms that are below 20 microvolts, which will introduce a lot of noise, particularly when, you know, most of what you map is in the area of SCAR. D does this uh, answer the question? Yes. D did you also construct an isochronal map? Um, no, but we can look at this. Can you right-click on the map? Right-click on the map and do isochronal? Lower? Uh-huh. And this is the isochronal map. So actually, like you know, it 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 does the where we drew the line. So it's the area of um, of where you have relatively uh, not dense isochronal, but you have like changes in multiple colors over a relatively small small area, right, Bill? Yeah, yeah. It does look like there's a slow area. And on either side of the line that you drew, the apical line. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, like, you know, it, it's not perfect. It's, we're looking on a, on a cartoon. Like, you can see that the lower purple area, it's probably not being activated from this uh, line that we drew. Because it looks like it just comes from nowhere. Or maybe, like, from the lateral aspect, from this blue. But you don't see like the whole uh, propagation of uh, of colors. I mean, to the apex. Please show the apex. Yeah, yeah, like to this area. So, is it that we don't have enough resolution in our map? Is it because it's bridging the endocardium and it comes there from uh, from uh, you know from deeper layers? I don't know. Well, Elad, thank you so much. This is a wonderful case, Elad and Peter. We're going to move back to the other lab. Thank, thank you, Honzai. Thank you, Peter. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Don't get the the wire, the the the, uh, the catheter. Uh, catheter does not want to go. And we need to get a little bit deeper in the vein. Uh, I don't know. It looks that it's somehow blocked. And the the lima keeps coming back. Ah. Oh. Yeah, no, there's no to to limo to create to keep the no. Okay. Am I? We? Who is on transmission? We are? Okay. We are. Okay. So, we can we go back to, let me see, because I don't want to lose this. We've gotten into a vein that had very good signals. Unipolar uh, wire signals were better than the decanav, and they were about 20-some uh, milliseconds before the QR, as you can see them on the on the bar, on the Pruka there, with a small R. Uh, we could not pace due to high output. And let's play back what we did. Um, we had the balloon. We have an eight by six millimeter balloon into that vein. Um, we could not get the balloon entirely in the vein. So only the no, distal aspect of the balloon was in there. Uh, we delivered alk we injected contrast in that, go back. So that was our, you see, we're going there. Well, go forward now. There, so that was in the, loca in the right location and we thought we were happy with the signal obtained from the wire and the challenge was to get the balloon sufficiently engaged. So we tried, notice also there's a more proximal vein. Anyway, with some uh, work, we were convinced that at least the distal part of the balloon was in the branch of interest. Uh, and we pulled the, you see how I retract the wire and re-advance it, and the wire goes back to that branch. So we were convinced that we were in there. Now I have the balloon partially inflated. You see I'm injecting contrast, and you see that septal vein is big. Forward, forward, forward. 
go go back to the previous the, the one you just showed a minute ago so yeah so when you have there when you have a vein like this uh, we don't want the alcohol to go necessarily all the way to that uh, to that deep septal so what we did is injected alcohol there and let it sit for five minutes so the idea is that the alcohol would sclerose that vein with the idea to then once we prove sclerosis with contrast and we get myocardial staining localize then give alcohol again for the therapeutic effect it's kind of, kind of like a one-two punch we give alcohol first to sclerose the vein and then alcohol second to really get it localized there uh, unfortunately in the process we lost the, the um, balloon engagement so we don't know how much alcohol got in there. Uh, we don't. We see maybe a very subtle stain uh, echogenicity on the ice, but not particularly impressive. So what we've been doing in the past uh, 15 minutes is try to get uh, smaller catheters selectively in that vein. And for that, I'm using a fine cross catheter, which is a floppy small catheter that doesn't have a balloon, so it's not occlusive. Um, it's obviously less less efficient at delivering alcohol to the tissue, but at least the hope is that it would get selectively in that vein. So um, right now, can you can you let me floral live? So right now, uh, let me floral live. Okay, right now, I may be in there. I have the fine cross. I have a lot of fine cross there. Let me make it a little bit more straight. I don't like that. Okay. The fine cross has only one marker. And let me see. You see how the wire is going somewhere, but I'm not sure where the tip of the fine cross is. And now it moves a little bit. And, um, you know, we can shoot. Let me shoot some contrast here. So I, I'm not sure the, wire, the fine cross is committed to that vein. I don't. So I'm going to try to keep working and try to get a little bit more distal deeper in that vein before I pull the fine cross. I want to make sure the fine cross tip is engaged in that vein before we give more alcohol. In the meantime, she's had some ectopy. Um, I don't want to jinx it, but I do think that the, some of the ectopy she's had was us probing with the wire. Let me see. Uh, the fine cross does not want to go. Let me get a little bit more wire. So this is when it gets uh, dicey. Now, I'm going to retract the wire all the way and then re-advance it, and I'm still in, in there. So you see, I pull the wire back, re-advance, and the wire gets back into that vein. So there is some hope that if I take the wire out, give contrast, maybe we have, we're still in there. So let me, I'm going to pull back the wire. And we're going to inject, I, th I don't know what is this, Alcohol. I think this may be contrast, I'm going to inject. Can I get um, contrast in a small syringe? Contrast? A small yeah. one? I'm going to inject contrast through the um, fine cross. I would like to see that it is selectively engaged in the vein. Um, and if we are in there, I would like to give alcohol before I lose it. So I'm getting... No, it's not. You see, I'm injecting contrast and it's not really going anywhere. Let me try a whisper wire that may be easier to get in the... I don't think we have whisper. We or we have, have a choice uh, PT or something yeah, that is... Yeah, we, we uh, have uh, this one. Amplot super... Super stiff? No, something that is that is hydrophilic. Hydrophilic. So okay. choice PT, whisper are good choices. Uh, I don't know. Now, no, this is it's kind of locally there. And we have Let me see. courier, courier guide wire. Uh, Miguel. Courier. Courier. When this one if it's hydrophilic. Uh, it's 
All right. Um, Guide bar medium. I mean, you can try. Let's try it. See Let's if it's question. any. So we're gonna try to get deeper in that vein with the with the um, wire. Uh, in the meantime, I, I believe some alcohol has gotten to the tissue. We had some non-sustained VT, slow VT when we deliver alcohol. Um, but and I believe there's some echogenicity below the aorta on ice. So some of it did get. Oh, I think this will be perfect. And I'm going with a, a little bit of a hydrophilic wire. So in the, you can see, yeah, during the alcohol injection, we had this non-sustained kind of idioventricular rhythm that is kind of a marker of, of tissue being reached by the alcohol. But uh, we don't have as much staining as I would like to see. I don't know what this is, but it's not. You pull back. So that's where we are. Um, I think at some point we may be ready to test with uh, isoprotenol again. Let me see if I can. We can get in there before. Because if I wa if we want to give more alcohol, I want to be ready immediately. I don't think it's. So, no, that's just parallel to the CS. We might have. Miguel, uh, they are thinking no. about switching yes. uh, to the other EP room at okay. the CAM yeah. for a while before you well, uh, advance in. Yeah. Okay. That's right. good. There you We're go. I think it might, it might have. Yeah. But to be honest, I think it might have caused a little dissection that might have been therapeutic. But Let's see. Slyšíš mě? Jste v záběru už. Maybe uh, we've done a very extensive ablation and just what you saw was the uh, induction. We had the first non-sustained polymorphic VT uh, and the second run of three extras uh, that tachycardia organizes with a very kind of rapid uh, VT, which maybe hopefully you're going to see on the... So this is the first monomorphic VT we've seen. So far, uh, only polymorphic were uh, uh, really uh, inducible up to this point. And uh, maybe Paolo can comment on uh, uh, what we've done uh, and uh, what uh, is the strategy to continue. So what we achieved actually was the loss of the near field activity both during sinus and during deep mapping all along the area. Can and we so show the electrogram online screen? Uh, uh, Federico, is this the remap? Okay, so, so can we compare to the baseline deep map? The blue points which you see on the Anavix and uh, inside map uh, are the ablation points. And maybe you can see that in the, in the tracing, the acute uh, or the online tracing, that the second component that was there during the, uh, on the septum is gone. So that was a tremendous uh, kind of uh, substrate modification already uh, took place. And uh, now we have a different type of VT morphology that I think I would like to tackle this, if you agree, yeah, yeah. if the anesthetist agrees. It's a different one. It has a more distinct free wall morphology, a vertical axis. So I'd suggest we uh, probably aim to the superior border of the mm -hmm. scar, mm -hmm. superior lateral that we actually we didn't work a lot there. So uh, on, on the right hand is the old one that was changing. The left one is the new one, the slower one, which is more 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 morphic uh, originating, probably in the upper part of the of the scar, which uh, we didn't. Does look a little more apical. Yeah. So probably you should aim to the evaluation of residual apical um, morphologies, or at least a residual apical uh, potentials. Okay. Okay. Would you into the? Can we put uh, in the review too? Yes. There is a lot. Uh, should we do a deep testing here, or redo uh, a complete new deep map? 
So again, we will, by pacing in the RV, we will look at the, this extra bit. Uh, in, uh, uh, can we go online screen on Pruka? And there is not that much interesting com component, uh, hopefully you saw. Or you maybe we can repeat uh, some other place. The upper part, there was no delayed component. Here, uh, I don't know tags the represent. Duties, so. The blue tags do represent ablation sites. So the extensive ablation was, was really done on the uh, apical or the, the anterior part of this aneurysm. So again, there's some delayed component and uh, uh, delta and uh, one, two, three, four. Can we try again here? So generally we try to search the substrate for more interesting electrograms using deep mapping. Uh oh, look here. Try again, please. Yeah. Still. So this is really large scar. We, we knew it's not going to be easy or a very straightforward case. Like you maybe had with Fermin, because obviously the substrate is much larger. Can we please again do uh, deep testing? There is a lot here. So as you can see now, there's definitely delayed activity still in the lateral portion of the of the of the scar. Go here. It's not that interesting. No, it's more so here. And generally, we will uh, everything which is white is not that interesting on the map because that means it's still in the QRS during these extra beats. Everything which is uh, beyond yellow and green uh, is very interesting. For the sake of time, uh, should hmm. I aim retrogradely, or are you afraid of the left bundle? No, no, no. I mean, you already the left bundle is there, so go. So I think that for that site, probably retrograde would be better. No, no, retrograde. Okay. So far we were using mainly transeptal approach and uh, we watched for in this 50 watts Can deliveries the intracardiac echo and uh, abrupt AP? shower of uh, bubbles and to be honest we had sometimes some so uh, we stopped some of these applications because of the uh, micro bubbles inside the tissue which is a way of uh, kind of overheating the tissue and we had uh, also popping. Okay, Federico, uh, is it okay? Do you want to do some kind of respiratory compensation or we are? Okay. Just so no, now we move to the, what we annotated as the green and uh, yellow. What, what and is, what is make your radio frequency time, so frequency time so far? Uh, generally, we don't do a uh, point-by-point point application. Uh, yeah. the, the deliveries are made in a kind of con continuous um, ablation with manipulation. After 20, 30 seconds, the catheter moves. Can we try uh, pacing from yeah, here? Uh, Just so pacing from the catheter. We can, we can number of deliveries. Yes, yes. The, that for that, we would have to generate the report to have an idea. Uh, so uh, the, now we paste map uh, from this part and seems to be too lateral, or at least for the uh, for the precordial leads. Uh. Yeah, a little bit higher up then. 
Uh, so for that, we, we can br tell you that number uh, after uh, we have to generate that in Pruka, or I don't know whether uh, Insight that can give you the total ablation time in seconds. Do you do we know that? So we they're working on it to find out the total. <coughs> two thousand. So two thousand seconds. Uh, so Thirty-five. Yeah. Minutes. So it's more than. Uh, 35, if I collect uh, c c correctly. So 1,800 will be. Okay, go. 33 minutes. They, they calculated. So this side uh, is a still substrate. It doesn't really correspond to the morphology, but this is just the exit, and and to probably want to make sure that the substrate is set. I don't know whether you can see the intracardiac echo. So this is what we do. We just watch this ap application. Maybe stop. Stop, stop, stop. 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 I don't know whether the quality is good enough for the transmission, but we see definitely some whitening of the tissue after 20 seconds of this 50 watts delivery is inside, even in the side this uh, dense car. Yeah, it, generally, it, we try it to, to it was stop visible. these applications. We may, we may keep with this uh, large eyes view for next delivery. Yeah, the quality here is a little bit better than you may probably have and because it's transfer of the image. Okay, go. We moved to the side of the previously ablated area, or now we've moved again. Oh, it moved. Uh, yeah. And we also will stop the impedance impedance drop is uh and it's a dramatic go okay, so you want to add something or they can go to another room Paulo okay, they, okay th so if you have something to show in the other room, we keep still it's a large scar which needs a lot of care, and we are not done yet. And so far, we more go for the substrate mapping rather than focus on the inducible VTs. Stop. 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 Um, can I go RAO, please? Uh, yes. So this is the RAO. That whenever you don't leave, keep it, the specially it, Agilis, it, it slides. Yeah, I, I prefer slides. that the, the yeah, preface, preface or SL1, it doesn't it yeah. doesn't bend, but it won't, it, once you get it up there. I know, the last time we did it together with, we are in? Oh, okay, we are in. Okay, so uh, since we spoke, um, we've taken another venogram. Uh, can I... Oh, this is our screen. Uh, yeah, that's our screen. At least what we see, it's our screen. If you can, see, if you can hear us, probably not. Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we hear you. Okay. Okay. So the yeah. 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 Okay. So since we spoke, um, we have taken another venogram and showed that the vein where we gave the alcohol is sclerosed. That's probably me. Yeah. Uh, then uh, we've given isoproteinol uh, to, um, as we did before, the, the, uh, the alcohol infusion. Uh, and nothing, no PVCs happened. Then we pulled out. Um, Mater count uh, from 100 to, you know, coming backwards by sevens and no PVCs and um, repeated alcohol, the isoprotonal infusion and we had no PVCs. So we were kind of happy. Uh, there's some subtle echogenicity on the ice right around the um, left main, if you can see now. 
is more bright than it used to be. We don't have Carto sound, so I'm not being able, I'm not able to tell you exactly where this where this would land in the map, uh, where this Ecogenis 3 would land in the map, but you can see how around with the left main uh, on ice, it's ecogenic. Um, uh, I am okay with this. Now, she had, as we started, as I started speaking, she had some PVCs. I don't yeah, know but that was from a uh, right out through track. Okay, I so I've, I've been moving the ice. Uh, ice. So we are ready to declare victory. Um, let me get out of. Let me, let me get out with uh, this, um, this is I pulled out uh no these are all positive in yeah. one so okay I pulled out the ice catheter um out of the RV and um we're playing the the venogram that we're playing shows how the vein where we injected contrast is not longer there is a stump the vein where we injected contrast took off uh Leftward of the AIV at the level of uh, three, four, and five, between three, four, and five, six. So now that's gone. Um, you know, sometimes it's more elegant than others. This, at least uh, one or two of the injections got into the myocardium by, as proven by the idioventricular rhythm that we had, and we don't have PVC, so I'm happy to declare victory. Uh, yeah, we did testing, uh, patient did uh, arithmetic test, uh, sh she was uh, exercising like hand grip before, it was always at least triggering few uh, ext extra beats, we were pacing atrium uh, rapidly, uh, we did uh, isoproterenol, and there is no, no PVC uh, whatsoever, so we, uh, and given the previous uh, reaction uh, uh, with ideoventricular rhythm, we believe that we've, we got a uh, right target because it was the closest vein to the early signal. As you could see, the signal from the wire was uh, even earlier than the signal from the kind of uh, catheter. So that, that was basically, uh, that was what we uh, hoped to get uh, some vein which is very close to it because uh, I remember I told you that last time we, we got some effect in, in a great cardiac vein uh, in that band where you have now this uh, three, four or five, six, but uh, it was uh, you know, painful and the procedure was already long so we did not want to uh, do some more and we expected that alcohol might be better choice. So that was uh, last uh, time uh, our thinking, and uh, I believe that we were right. Uh, so that's it. Any yeah. questions? Take this on ice. I like to compare just sideways of the aorta. That's where it would be. Uh, let me see there. Any questions? No, there are no questions. Uh, so. No questions. Uh, I would like to thank you for this uh, challenging case. And uh, Fermi okay. Garcia from Homolka uh, is about to conclude uh, his case. So we will switch for Homolka Hospital. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, see you. Are we sure that those were not the last ones? When I started speaking, she started having a. a no, a, it was the so positive. It was positive. <laughs>
the best chance of success without being at the best side of origin because it's not an endocardial PVC. And that's the idea. The idea is it should be a straightforward case if you find this type of activation. And it was one burn opposite to the wire on a late activation. I am not sure um, you know, why it made things more difficult um, than they are. I'm happy it's a straightforward case. I will tell you sometimes this doesn't work. And then you have to think another strategies. Um, and if you want to put the Pruka again, just put the Pruka, he's uh, moving it. Um, uh, but that's what we have. We've been one hour, we ablated right there where you have that fluoroscopy image uh, opposite to the wire and the EGMs. Can you put the Pruka? Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's the, can you tell them to put the Pruka on the main screen? And that's, yeah. that's where we ablated. So I open to any questions you might have and we're here um, essentially just uh, finishing here in the lab. Congratulations for a wonderful case. I have one question. In order it won't be so straightforward, will you consider a pulse field focal application in that patient if you have galaxy ablator on your EP lab? Uh, well, I, I, I guess that in the future um, the answer would be yes. Uh, once we, we get it in our hands and we, we understand what we're doing, I think that you will have the ability here in Europe to do that before I do in the United States. Um, I think that with this type of activation, honestly, any ablation would work because, because you're very close to the site of origin. And if an RF lesion can get deep to 0.5 centimeters, I'm sure, hopefully, a pulsive ablation also will do the same. Um, so you, uh, you in Europe and, and anybody who will get hands on this type of catheters, what I said on my talk is really important. I think, I think the success here is not necessarily more powerful tools. It's not necessarily 70 watts or pulse field ablation or alcohol. The, what we need to understand is better mapping. And if we understand better mapping and we combine it with anatomy, which is the two principles of electrophysiology, then we can understand activation and we understand where to deliver the best lesion. Now, would that be uh, RF? Pulse field ablation, alcohol, half normal selling, whatever it is, you need to understand this. You will never be able to, to overcome uh, the understanding of electrophysiology with anatomy and mapping by more powerful tools, by more powerful, aggressive interventions. Um, I think that if we were to fail here, we certainly would have considered other things. And I think that's, in my opinion, for these cases where alcohol comes, not as a first line uh, strategy, at least in our lab, or at least in my cases in my lab and my institution, and I, was, I speak probably for most of my colleagues, uh, this is what we do, and it works, and we have shown it works. Um, so, um, Paul field ablation, anything that comes by, if you're guided by this type of uh, detailed mapping and understanding of the anatomy, I think you will be successful. Now, if it's a deeper source, that's where I would like to have a more powerful tool, then maybe pulse field ablation will overcome what RF cannot do. I don't, ha I don't know the answer to that, uh, but I certainly hope that we will get the ability to do things of that nature. Sorry. Just a question. But, uh, so, if I well understood, so you advise to try anyway endocardially, uh, despite, uh, for example, this is not the case here, but uh, having during the map that the earliest activation is epicardially, for example, first. And secondly, if you unsucceed endocardially and you have the proof that the, the earliest activation is uh, more epicardially, what do you think about the cryo epicardially? Yeah, so to answer your first question, that was the first, um, uh, the, the second practical approach where I present on my talk is the true LV summit. You're asking us um, uh, You're asking us for uh, what would you do if you have a true LV summit? Our approach back in 2005 to 2010 was to to start in the end though if you were in the AP you will be most likely successful if that distance is one or less than one centimeter. But that's where failure comes, for the true LV summit, the one that's super early in the epicardium. At that point, if you cannot get it from the end, though, 
And that's what we advise, because that's what we did for years. What we wouldn't do for years, or I wouldn't do for years, is do more powerful and more powerful lesions, because you know you're not going to reach. At that point, the strategy would be either burn from the AIV, if you can put the ablation catheter there. The strategy would be alcohol. Or the strategy could be bipolar ablation. You're trying to get deeper and superficial in the subendocardium. I, I, I had some experience with cryo in the past, in the great cardiac vein, and it did not do much of any good lesions in, the, in that area. I, I, I don't think the catheter behaves that well inside of the venous circulation, but I, to be very honest with you, I don't have a lot of experience on that to, to tell you more than, than just that um, it was not something that worked. I think the same analogy, if you're super, super early in the subepicardial region and you are like at minus 45, honestly, if you can deliver any lesion there, it's going to work because you now are super close to the site of origin. Um, and, and, and that could be, again, RF, pole field ablation, or this is the ones that you will, in my opinion, consider alcohol. I would not start um, uh, with anything else different for this case. Um, those are the ones that you might still fail because it's really subepicardial and there's no way to get there. Um, but alcohol, I think, is a solution for the true LV summit PVCs. These are not LV summit, these are intramural PVCs. And you usually get very close from the endocardium if you can find the advantage point of closer uh, anatomy that's close to the site of origin. All right, Fermin, thank you very much for the case and the, and the discussion. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we are behind the schedule. Uh, uh, and we will close the transmission from the Homework Hospital. And uh, so thank you again. And uh, we will switch to ICAM. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good night. OK, this is very nice. Can you show this in the review screen now? Uh, can you slow down in the review screen? So we don't now have a tri triple extras, and we have only non-sustained runs. Uh, this was the second repeated beat. And maybe it's time to finish, I would say. So maybe well, uh, from my point of view, I would say that we really did extensive ablation of this whole uh, uh, septal scar. Uh, there is no pace capture. During pacing, uh, there is no virtually electrograms over these blue points where we, the ablation was performed. So it's very effective. And uh, uh, the question is whether to continue uh, with very aggressive induction or whether to stop. Uh, that's uh, now um, Paolo may uh, have a comment. Well, it's, uh, it's of course up to, to the uh, overall status of the patient. The anesthetist should uh, set a word. Uh, is it the patient in acidosis? How is the LV function after all of this? No, the, the LV function was very poor from the very beginning. The ejection fraction was 20%. And I believe uh, we've done uh, uh, extensive uh, uh, ablation with uh, reaching this uh, kind of non-sustained uh, okay, VT. So then and, and then I would really finish. Uh, uh, I mean, if, the, the, if you just maybe go and go uh, show the age degree, the, the, if you move along the blue tax, yes, yes, just I think that for the audience to see, <laughs> and we, maybe we try to paste there, uh, that there's really no capture, and there is uh, virtually no, no the second component electrograms anymore. It's just the one, one, one electrogram in the very beginning. And we have no space now. So this is the uh, kind of where we didn't attack because there was never interesting. Can we not pace there? But I mean, when we move to the blue tags. Let me go back to this area. Yeah, it's, it's just frozen. Yeah. So maybe th now you can appreciate it. It's just one single component, very beginning. It's more far fieldish component. Uh, it's uh, just a septum. And it's, uh, from the depth uh, and subendocardial, there is nothing. Maybe we can try to move there into this blue part and maybe do some uh, RV uh, deep, just uh, show that there is nothing. Maybe we can show it also on the map that we had previously, that very beautiful uh, 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 delayed uh, uh, potential. So maybe we can park it here. Maybe we can do the pacing from the RV if there is a capture. Let me go to the side. Just, just, just stop, stop, don't do it. Again, we have to make a good position of the HD grid.
Okay. Okay. So now do the RB pacing, just to ver verify, and the extra bit that there's nothing. And this was an area that there was a lot of lot of uh, late uh, delayed activations. So so I believe that's a very good uh, kind of uh, substrate modification. We have a as was said something about uh, 40 minutes now uh, of the RF. Uh, energy it's with the very high or not very but high power with this 50 watts so definitely it's, it was a kind of uh, uh, extensive enough i would say and we reached this this non-sustained with these it's a large substrate i believe it's wise to 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 maybe uh, uh wait and see the the, the result uh, okay there are there any questions and comments in the audience about the uh Yes, well, th thank you very much for a wonderful case. It's certainly very different than he was an hour ago. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I hope you can hear the applause. Yeah, we are fine. Thank you. There will be a 15-minute coffee break, and then we'll resume. Thank you.